In this video, we're going to be looking at React hooks, specifically the use effect hook, and how we can replace our class based components with the new React hook method. Now, as you can see here, I have a pretty simple React app. All we're doing is displaying a count, and when I click increment count, it just updates it to be plus one. Let's take a look at the class based code we currently have. We can see here we have our app class. It has a constructor that is currently declaring the initial state. We're setting in our initial state count to be equal to zero. Over here, we just have a header that displays what the count is, and we call this.state.count to display what our current count is. And also, we have a button, and the text in that button is increment count, and the on click pretty much just calls this function that sets states uh, the count equal to this.state plus one. First of all, let's look at how we can replace something as simple as this using React hooks. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to gut almost everything out of this file other than J the JSX. And I've kept another file that just has all the class-based code in here just for reference. So the first thing to understand when you're using hooks is your components are no longer classes, they're functions now. So I can type const app and then I can use an arrow function just like so and I can put all this code in there. Now another thing to note is within our class-based components we would normally have a render and within that render, we would have a return that would have all the JSX inside of it. With class-based or with function-based components, you don't actually need that. All we can, all we have to write is our return, and we can actually put all our code just in there, just like that. Now let's look at how we actually declare the state now. So we need a variable called count, and we need it initialized to zero. Well, you can use that through a hook called use state. So if I type use state here, it'll actually automatically import it from react and I can say something like const count and set count is equal to use state zero now let me explain very briefly what this will do essentially what we're saying here is I'm gonna call the use state function I'm gonna pass in a variable and out of that I should get an array it should return an array that has two values. The first value is our count. So it's actually the count that we will be displaying here. The second value is this function called set count. As you know in React classes, if you wanted to change the value of one of your state variables, you would have to use the set state function. But since we don't keep all of our state in one universal place, we can't do that anymore. So every state variable will actually come with a setter method. And whenever you wanted to set the value or change the value of that state variable, you would simply call its setter method. So if I wanted to set count to be equal to seven, for example, I would just have to just have to call set count and then pass in seven just like that. Now let's look at how we can replace this code down here. So first of all, when we're displaying the count, we only have to pass in our current count. Second of all, let's create this handle increment on click function. Now, like I said before, there's no really render function. This whole function itself acts as a, everything that's over here would act as uh, it would normally inside of a render function in React. So all we have to, in class-based components, all we have to do is uh, type const handle increment on click. We create an arrow function. And all we can, all we have to really say is set count. And then in here, we can just say count plus one. And down here, we just export default uh, app to make sure that we're exporting it. And on this call, we would just um, save it. And here we go. You can see our app is reloaded and it pretty much works the same. If we wanted to set it, uh, we wanted to increment by 10, for example, we can just set that to 10. And you'll see here it is now incrementing by 10. Now let's take a look at the use effect hook and how it can replace lifecycle methods in React. So I modified the code a bit and you'll see here, now instead of, I'm back to a class-based component and instead of just showing the counter in the app, what I've done is I've pretty much created a button that when you click it, it'll show the counter and when you click it again, it'll hide the counter. And the logic's pretty simple. I just have a variable uh, called showing counter in our state that's set to false. And when you click this button, it'll set it to whatever uh, the opposite 
positive it is. So if it's hidden, it'll show it. If it's showing, it'll hide it. And then down here, this is just a little bit of logic. Um, if this is true, it will render uh, this count. And that's sort of what the and and thing does. Um, and you can see in our counter class, I've now added uh, a couple lifecycle methods. So if you're not too familiar with lifecycle methods, here's what they do. Component did mount will pretty much run whenever the component is first mounted. Component did update will run every time the component is updated. Component will unmount will run every time the component is unmounted. And I'll show you what I mean. If we go to our console, um, let's go ahead and refresh this to update it. So we can see here when I show the counter for the first time, it says I have mounted. That is when the component did mount will show right after the component has been rendered on the page. If I click increment count, we'll see here it wrote that it was updated. So whenever something about this class updates, and it re-renders, a component did update will count uh, will be called. And I can keep clicking this increment and you can see it'll call it over and over and over and over again. And as soon as I hide the component, it does what's called unmounting, which is it ceases to be rendered. Um, and that's when the component will unmount is called. Now let's look at how we can call all of these three things using the use effect hook. All right, so I've gone ahead and moved all that class-based code into functional components, and you'll already see it's a lot more concise, cleaner, and easier uh, to read. Um, just basically, we're doing the same thing. We have a show counter variable in our app, and our counter hook, our counter component, um, looks pretty much the same. Now, before we go into how to replace the lifecycle methods, let's take a look at how the use effect is structured in the first place. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import use effect um, from React along with the use state. And you can see here it's broken down into a couple of different uh, parts. You have this one thing in the middle. First of all, the use effect takes in two parameters. The first parameter it takes in is a uh, arrow function, and the second parameter it takes in is an array. Um, and let me sort of write this a bit simpler so you can see it. So the first component that we pass in is the arrow function, and then the second thing we can pass in is an array. Um, Inside this uh, arrow function, you can have what is known as an effect, and you can also have what is known as a cleanup. The cleanup is passed in to the return as another arrow function. So if we wanted to have a cleanup, and I'll explain exactly what that means in just a second, you would type return, you would make an arrow function, and then whatever you want to do in the cleanup, you would put in there. But let's just look at um, the use effect without the cleanup at first. Essentially what is happening here is we are saying we want this effect to trigger whenever something in here gets updated, something in that array gets updated. So let's say, for example, whenever the count increments, I want to console.log, the count has been incremented. So the effect is we are console.logging, the count has been, has been incremented. And in this array, we would pass in the variable we want it to trigger off of, the variable we want this effect to be called from when it changes. So now if I were to show the counter, we would see that Curiously, it, number one runs uh, right at the beginning, even though we haven't incremented our count, and number two, every time we increment our count. And that is because when you have a uh, use effect that passes an array in, it pretty much acts as a component will mount, a component did mount, sorry, and a component did update all at the same time. Um, if we were to pass in an empty array, what we're essentially telling it is we want this to run whenever the stuff inside of the array is updated, but since we're passing in an empty array, it will not run um, it will not run other than the first time the component is mounted. And this becomes essentially a component did mount. When we pass in a use effect that has an effect and an empty array, that is pretty much just a, a component did mount. And we can see here, as soon as I click show high counter, it'll say the count has been incremented. And no matter what I do, um, it won't be called again, whether I show it or hide it again. So now let's say, for example, what if we don't pass in anything at all? What if we just um, pass in the effect. Well, pretty much since we're not passing in an array, it will be saying, okay, this effect will run pretty much anytime anything updated. And by the way, if you can hear that, that's my cats 
they're going crazy and like I guess trying to fight each other. I don't know if you can see that. Anyways, uh, now if we were to uh, refresh this page, when we show it, it updates. When we click something, it updates. And if we were updating any other state variables, which I'll show you in a sec, it would also update. And finally, um, we have this return, this thing called the cleanup. So I'll pass it in as an arrow function, and I'll console.log cleaning um, this cleanup has been called. And you'll pretty much uh, right away understand what it's doing. And I'll hide that again. So we click high, uh, show counter, nothing. Uh, comes up we increment the count um the clean oh whoops we should also uh pass in that um so we increment the count and you'll see nothing happens and then as soon as we hide it the cleanup has been called this is effectively now a component did unmount we are passing an empty array so none of this will get run um when anything updates because we're passing in an empty array um and as soon as we hide the component as soon as we hide the component, that's when it'll be called. That's when the cleanup is called. So just to, cl uh, just to um, reiterate, when you're using use effect, here is the basic structure of it. So use effect. We have the effect. We have the option to have a cleanup. And we have the option to have inputs that will determine when our effect will run. And we can essentially make all of this a component did mount, a component will update, a component did update and a component will unmount. And you can have as many use effects as you want. So if I just wanted uh, to have specific logic that gets called when the function is cleaned up, I can have that there. If I wanted to specifically output something um, whenever count is updated, I can just be like console.log count has, uh, or let's say for example, a uh, component did mount, uh, the count component, component mounted and I can just uh, pass in an empty array here, and you'll see uh, they work in tangent with each other. Um, something, uh, so there are a couple of rules that you have to respect. The first and biggest rules is the use effect has to be at the top level of your component. You can't have this use effect within another function. So let's say, for example, if I tried to put the use effect into the handle increment on click, we would get an error. Um, you can only have it outside uh, on the top level of your actual component. And the second rule to know, which is pretty much just the same as the first rule, but a bit more explicit, is that um, you can't have it inside of any for. So the same way you can't have it inside of a function, you also can't have it inside of a, like a for loop or an if statement. I can't write like if count is greater than five, um, run this use effect, because um, that will also error as well. Um, so pretty much, you have to make sure your use effect is always on the top level of your component. All right, and just as the last example of why hooks are, are really great um, is let's say we have two counts. We have count number one and count number two. And as you can see here, we have each use effect. So this use effect, uh, if you need to pause the video and see what each use effect is, this use effect is our component did mount. This is our component did update. This is our component did unmount. Let's say, for example, we only wanted to run something every time count one was updated. So we wanted a component did update, but we wanted to um, make sure that it only ran when one of the variables updated um, in our regular uh, uh, in our regular uh, component did update in react classes we would have to write something like an if statement so if like count um, if the count was the thing that was updated and we would have to actually pass in the new state and compare the two which is a lot of work for something that's pretty simple um, what we can do here is on our component did update all we have to do is write a comma make our array and pass in the regular count and we can see here if we were to inspect and go to our console when we update our count two our component did update is not going to run, but when we update our increment, our uh, count one, it does run. So this is a really easy way to deal when you're dealing with a lot of different state variables and you want to try to perform a lot of different actions. Um, hooks and use effects are a great alternative to class-based components, and they're pretty much in style. In fact, the reason people were using class-based components were for uh, as opposed to function-based components is because class-based components didn't really have a good way to deal with a component state the same way, or, or functional components didn't really have a good way to deal with component state the same way class components did. But um, after this update came out, a couple months ago, um, uh, functional based components became the new standard again. Uh, and the code is a lot less verbose, it's a lot easier to use. And um, in another video, I'll show you guys how to use state and reducers, um, reducer state. Um,
and stuff like that. And you'll see why it's also a lot easier to use uh, third party libraries as well. Um, and that's it for this video. If you have any requests on the next React videos I should be doing or anything you need help with in React, leave a comment below and I will get to it. Um, and make sure you guys check out the Forge.ca. I post all my tutorials there and more. Um, and it's uh, pretty much built for anyone that wants to get a software uh, job um, or start a software career. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.